Welcome back to the Global Marriage Booster. I am so excited to introduce Heidi Schleifer, and this woman is just mind-blowing. You are going to love this. Heidi is an internationally renowned master relationship builder and motivational speaker. She guides and teaches couples, partners, business associates, therapists, and families about relational maturity. Heidi is the founder of the Encounter-Centered Couples Transformation Approach, which we'll be hearing about soon. She believes that world peace begins with a human family and can be best achieved by strong, committed, growing, mature partnerships. Heidi, thank you for joining me and joining all of us. I'm really, really so excited about everyone hearing you and hearing your love, your heart, your wisdom. You have so much, so much to share. And here we go. <laughs> thank you, Hannah. <laughs> so tell me, uh, we're in this crazy pandemic. And you have seen so many different things happen in your life. This is unusual. <laughs> and I'm wondering what your insights are about the pandemic, how it has affected relationships and what, what your advice is to couples to really come out of this thing strong and connected. You know, it's interesting as you ask the question, I'm thinking about myself and my husband. We will be married 55 years. Wow. And my husband has had the courage to change many, many, many times. And every time he changed, I decided he's my new husband. And so I started counting. And a year and a half ago, he was diagnosed with neurocognitive impairment. And I realized that husband 28, which we was, he was at the time, I had to say goodbye to. And I did. I grieved my 28th husband and I welcomed fully my 29th. So people say, are you a caregiver? No, I'm not a caregiver. We are care partners. I care for him as deeply as I know how. He cares for me as deeply as he knows how. And I must tell you that for us, the pandemic that I call Corona Shmorona, the pandemic has been a blessing because it has brought us home, just the two of us. And I've been able to learn my 29th husband, and he has been able to learn his new wife, the one who welcomes him now. And so I think that the pandemic is really a blessing and a teacher. It brings us to the simplicity of just being and to learn how to welcome that which is. And so, you know, to really, I, there's a saying I love, which is that very few people know that there are special angels whose only job it is to make you uncomfortable so you won't fall asleep and miss your life. So the pandemic is one of those angels of discomfort who won't allow us to fall asleep in our old habits and miss our life. And so for couples, it is a splendid opportunity to learn how to be each other's best care partner, the way you, me, and I are learning now, again. Beautiful. I love it. So, Heidi, your 28th husband, your 29th husband, yeah, we get married, and uh, I'm only going on 30 in, in my 32nd year, so we're, we're small compared to you. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like we have these, we change and, and it's a different marriage. And it's, and we, yes, I certainly experienced you know, I that. My husband is, I don't, he's not my 28th, but he's something like my ninth or 10th right now. Exactly. And I want to tell you, you know, when Yumi and I got married, I say that we were the Olympic champions of unconsciousness. We didn't even know that there is such a thing as consciousness. You get married, you love each other, all is well, you know. But then later we realized that there's a lot to learn here. And we really need to be able to gather consciousness to become a conscious couple. Okay, so, so how did you do that? How did you become a conscious couple? And how can the rest of us all become conscious yeah. couples? You know, it was a long journey of many crystallized knowledges that we gathered, but ultimately we realized there's one guiding principle. 
The guiding principle is that the dance we do, the coping dance that we do, always will disconnect us. We call it the survival dance. And in that dance, we are truly in a power struggle. What connects us? We discover there are three invisible connectors. One, the space between us. We are actually responsible for the quality of the space between us. And the Jewish philosopher Martin Buber is the one who the, was the first one to name the space. He said, our relationships live in the space between us. It doesn't live in you or in me or even in the dialogue between us. It lives in a space we share. And he said, that space is sacred. And so it behooves each one of us to learn how to sanctify that space between us. Because I like to say the playground of the child is in the space between the couple. And so when that space is sacred, the playground of the child is sacred. So that's one connector is learning how to take responsibility of the quality of the space make it fertile, make it safe, make it sacred. The second connector is a bridge, a narrow bridge like the rabbi of Bratislav said, the whole world is a narrow bridge, just don't scare yourself to cross it. So there's a bridge between our worlds. And the reason there's a bridge is that only incompatible people fall in love with each other. You know, the grandmother of a friend of mine said, if the two of you are the same, one of you is superfluous. <laughs> so yes, we come together, very different people where I'm fully alive and connected. Maybe you are not yet fully alive and connected and vice versa. So there's a bridge that we can cross so that we can learn the world of the other. And the reason it's such a narrow bridge is because we don't meet in the middle. We actually cross all the way to the other side. And I like to say that a good relationship a good marriage is bilingual. You learn the language, the rhythm, the music, the culture of your partner. So I speak Yumish, you know, my husband's Yumi's name is Yumi, Yumish, and he speaks Yiddish. We've <laughs> learned each other's language and we are indeed bilingual because we've crossed the bridge so many times. And the third invisible connector is what Buber, the philosopher, calls the encounter. It's where the souls meet each other. It's those magical times where you suddenly feel like we are really deeply connected soul to soul, the encounter. And the way these three are connected to each other is when we honor the space between us and we cross the bridge to know our partner on the other side, we create the conditions for the encounter. Now the encounter, we all know it. We are like accidental tourists there. Sometimes we get suddenly plunked into that encounter and then yanked out of it. And when we honor the space and cross the bridge, we create conscious condition to, to live in the zone of the encounter. So the encounter is when we're present in ourselves and with our partner. And it has that added dimension of that magical experience. Like we have it sometimes with music. You know, we can hear a piece of music. We love it. And then sometimes we enter the, the zone of the encounter with that piece of music. We cry. We feel it in all our fiber or in nature. Sometimes you walk into nature and suddenly you're in the zone of the encounter. It's magical. You smell everything. You see everything. That's what Buber called the encounter, and he described it because of his marriage, because he and his wife entered into that zone every once in a while, he wanted to describe it. And so that's the third invisible connector, is our capacity to be in the zone of the encounter. Beautiful. Ah. And it is those magical moments that, yes. we, that we can make happen more and more. Yes. yes. And you know, often when I work with a couple and they embrace how to clear the space and make it safe and sacred and they cross the bridge and they learn and they enter the zone of the encounter, often they'll say, it's like when we stood under the chuppah. 
when we got married, that magical moment, I'm feeling it right now, the encounter. Amazing, amazing. Wow. So, so this experience that you have um, and you are able to give over to so many people, can you talk about the work that you do and invite people to, to, to join you in this Absolutely. experience? Yeah. So, you know, when a couple reaches out to me now, because it's done on Zoom, <clears throat> I like to just have a meeting with them in which they get to know me and I get to know them. Just a, a moment to see whether they want to go into the journey that I'm going to be proposing to them. And here's the journey that I do now on Zoom. The first foundational step that I ask couples is what is it you dream about? What is your deepest aspiration for your relationship? What does your heart long for? And each one of them gets three big wishes. And the first step is to put three very big wishes for the relationship, for the family, for the children. You know what they really, really want in the deepest part of themselves. So it's a real exploration. We put that on the horizon. And then they bring a picture of their children. And when I read to them what's on the horizon, the children are looking. Because what do we give our children as a legacy? are the ways that we lived our dreams and aspirations. So that's the first step, each time two hours. The second step is I tell them to have the worst conversation they've ever had, but for 13 minutes, one, three. And you know why 13? Because as you know, in Hebrew, each letter has a numerical value. 13 is ahava, love, and echad, one. So if you're going to have a horrible conversation, might as well be in the name of love and oneness. Now, when the conversation is up, I say, stop, 13 minutes. I say to them, this couple was in a restaurant and you happen to be in that restaurant and you see them and you watch them, but you don't know what they said because somebody whispered to you, this couple is from another planet. It's called Wygelia. So they speak Wygelian and you don't speak Wygelian. What did you see? So if you take out the content and you only see the dance, what shows up to the couple as they look, the, the woman is hitting on a, a big wall that seems to be between them. The man is looking through a little hole there. Why is she pushing like this? But I'm, I, I have to look at her. She starts crying. He doesn't know what to do because he's behind the other side of the wall. They describe. They describe the coping mechanism, the survival dance they've had for 25 years. But they've never seen it as an observer, as a witness, the way suddenly in that restaurant, they got to see that couple. And once they've described that dance, I welcome them into an international club. Because you know what? Couples all over the planet dance this same survival dance. The metaphors are the same, the expressions are the same, the tone of voices are the same, the feeling of disconnection is the same. Welcome to the club. And that's a really important thing for them to know. They're not the only ones dancing this dance. As a matter of fact, one couple went home and they asked their children to draw these extraterrestrial Wygelians. And they said, we're gonna put them on the fridge. And every time you see us dance that dance, because we're learning to do something completely different. When you see us, you can take our hand, take us to the fridge and show us that picture <laughs> because it will help us know that's not what we want to do. We want to be in connection. <laughs> and so that's the way to introduce the guiding principle I spoke to you, that the survival dance will always disconnect us. Yeah. But what will connect us are those three invisible connectors. And what I do after that, is I invite the couple to welcome the three invisible connectors step by step by step till ultimately they really feel like they are living in the zone of the encounter. Mm -hmm. And that's the purpose because on the horizon is that dream 
you know, not spoken like the zone of the encounter, but all the ways to feel profoundly connected to each other. Mm. So that's my work. Mm. And I adore, I adore it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why it's called encounter center transformation, mm -hmm. because the research on the brain has shown that relationships change the brain and good relationships change the brain more. And so we are really transformed because our brain changes in deep, good relationships. Mm. Sweet, that's just so, so right. Mm. So when you're, when you're teaching the first invisible, you know, space between, okay, can, can you, Maybe give our couples right now a, a taste of what you would say, how they can absolutely so how the they can first, feel that space. Right. The first step that I do with couples is to establish the bridge, and that's nonverbal. And I'll tell you why it's nonverbal. Research has shown that 93% of communication is not in the words. It's in the facial expression, in the eye contact, in the open heartedness, in touching skin, 93%, 7% is in the words. And so the establishment of the bridge is nonverbal. And I explained to the couples, come sit very, very close at 18 inches from each other, because when we are born, we look into our parents' eyes at 18 inches. You know, a little child, when they want your attention, they bring your face at 18 inches, 44 centimeters. Why? Because the eye is structured that there you see only the face of the other. Further, the rest of the surrounding is also in there, but there it's just the face of the other. And so I teach the couple that that's how close they're gonna have to be because the bridge is 18 inches. 44 centimeters. Now, what's very interesting about that is that that is an amma. It's in the tabernacle, the space between the kovin, the archangels, wow. is 18 inches. So it's quite a archetypical dis uh, proximity, not distance, proximity. Mm -hmm. The couple comes at 18 inches from each other, make eye contact. For some of them, it's welcome. For some of them, it's a little bit scary, a little bit difficult, and we play with it. But I want ultimately for them to settle into those 18 inches because the research has shown that at 18 inches, when you look with soft eyes, the two limbic systems, which are the seat of the emotion, begin to resonate together. It's called limbic resonance. Mm -hmm. And when limbic resonance is established, the research now says the brain bridge is established. So this is the new mm -hmm. relational neurobiology research says there's a brain bridge. When both your limbic systems resonate together, the brain bridge is established. It's a biological miracle. And then what comes after that is limbic regulation. The two people's central nervous system calm down. So I want the couple first to have that experience that when they sit across from each other with soft eyes, that say, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for being willing to learn with me. Thank you so much for the beautiful children that we have. Thank you so much for the journey, all of it, the good, the bad, the difficult, the easy for everything, the tapestry of our relationship. And the eyes get softer and softer and they hold hands and they are at 18 inches and suddenly their central nervous system calm down and they look at each other with a look they haven't looked in so long because it's the look of gratitude and of presence. No word has been spoken, but you see they've already experienced what it's like to sit at bridged proximity. And then I have them close their eyes a little bit just to feel what it's like when their skin touches. You see, it's, this is all establishing the bridge. And then I ask them with closed eyes to create an intention for their relationship the deepest intention they can possibly create. All this is nonverbal. 
And then when they open their eyes, they tell each other the deep intention they spoke inside. And that's the establishment of the bridge. We've not yet even started a visit, but then already I can say, what does the space between you feel like right now? And when it felt tense and angry and frustrated and like a fire and like a wall in the Wygelian dance, it now feels soft and cozy and safe and flowy and energetic. And they begin to see that they are responsible for the quality of that space. We haven't yet said a word. You see what I'm saying? That's how I start. Mm. So powerful. So yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. It's always so moving for me, you know, to, to see that occurring, mm -hmm. that biological miracle occurring of the limbic resonance and the limbic regulation. We're wired for connection. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it's a relational paradigm. We're wired for connection. <laughs> it's so beautiful to hear this process. You know, the piece I wanted to add, Hana, is this that I've discovered that what attracts us to each other is that we have a very similar hero's journey. That each one of us, if you look back at our whole journey, you'll see a hero and a heroine. And that when we enter the stories together, we realize that we are particularly well-versed in that unique, specific hero's journey that our partner has lived and that connection of two heroes getting to know each other is such a powerful thing. And I'm gonna tell you in, in our case that Yumi had two sisters who were killed on a refugee boat, boat that was on its way from Romania to Palestine. It was torpedoed and all the, all the survivors machine gunned one couple survived. She was pregnant six months. They were, they were swimmers, professional swimmers. They swam under the Black Sea and they got to a Turkish village. And Yumi said, let's go, but maybe my sisters are there. You know, he looked for them his whole life. He couldn't accept in a way that they had really died. He was gonna be on that boat with his brother, but the boat was already too full of refugees. And so he and his brother went by train to Palestine in, you know, 1944. When, before I met Yumi, I went to Brazil to visit a couple, uh, uh, cousins, and I went on a journey with a very, very close friend on the Rio Paraná in the jungle. And we had a boating accident and my friend died in that boating accident. And, I did not want to live after that because why did she die? Why didn't I die? But you know, I really did hear a voice that says, Haiti, hey, I didn't bring you all the way through the jungle because I was in the jungle by myself with my dead friend. I didn't bring you all the way through the jungle for you to just end your life. I mean, it was just a real on the edge for me. That's when I met Yumi. And the hero's journey that Yumi had in choosing to live in spite spite of all that he went through and me finding somebody who understands that edge where you choose life but in a way you kind of don't want it anymore it's just so painful that's the hero's journey and we understood each other in a way that probably no one who hasn't had that particular hero's journey would understand. And so I understood deeper and deeper that as we learn about each other's hero's journey, we find what ultimately attracted us to each other. Mm, that's so beautiful. I, I never thought about it as the hero's journey. And now yeah. my mind is, is thinking it's, <laughs> it's so, yeah. I, you know, I, I think that it's also with time that we start to see more and more of that the, right the, the, what really like you know why did we get married like we start to see so many connections that are so yeah. profound and exactly it's, and it's it, really true it's and it's in getting to know each other's journey yeah deeper and deeper and deeper the courage 
the resilience, the choice to live, all of those. And with each couple, it's a different hero's journey, but it always is one. Mm -hmm. Can you give a few examples of when you say hero's journeys, like what are a few examples of, of what you've seen people's hero's journeys being? So if you think about anybody's childhood, birth, beginnings, school, any, anybody's journey, you'll see the many places of ultimate courage and resilience that each one of us have had. So for me, just our childhoods and growing up and teenagehood and uh, beginning adulthood, there already, you will see all the examples of being heroes. And so it doesn't need to be that we've had incredible trauma. I think Yumi and I did, but it doesn't have to be because even just the choices we make as young people and teenagers and just the whole of life and the ancestry, the stories of the mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers, you really see in all of that the heroic, the heroic journey of being a human being. Mm. So I, you see what I'm saying? It's, it's so beautiful. It's heroic. so deep, so deep. And, and again, for, for some of our listeners, right, who haven't had, you know, thank God, major trauma, but it's just, it's the little, those little things. And so we've all yeah. gone through something, whether it's being bullied a bit in school or not being academically as advanced or, or jealousy or, and, and that is where we see our resilience and exactly and, yeah. exactly yeah, and courage and courage yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. so good so I thank you for this opportunity Hannah. Oh. I'm loving talking to you i find that you know it's flowing out like this you're a very open your heart to receive and thank you for that well, well, first of all, I feel like I'm representing the heart of all of all of the couples around the world who want to hear from you. But you're also very easy to receive from because I could just sit here all day and listen to you and just vibe, vibe with you. It's just, it's, thank you. Thank you. So um, as hopefully we're going to be stepping out of lockdown soon and, you know, any, any kind of transition is challenging, even when it's a positive transition. So what's your advice for couples as we're hopefully going to be transitioning into some sort of a different life? It might not be what it was one, once upon a time, it might take a while to get there, but what is your advice for, you know, couples transitioning? You know, it's interesting, the memory I have is what a couple told me last week, which I thought was so meaningful, that for them, the lockdown is not lockdown, it's sheltered in, and it's like a long Shabbat. It's like a time of peacefulness and quietness and being together. And I think that it's an important normal, normalcy to take along from the lessons learned here, that the possibility is that we learn what it's like to be sheltered in together, that we learn what it's like to land with each other, just happy to be there together just for the sake of that togetherness and that we allow Corona Shmorona to be our teacher of that kind of slow, steady, full presence with each other. And that we take that with us out of, you know, the sheltered in time and continue the way we make a Shabbat, you know, the way we, frame a time of just being that we continue to know Corona Shmorona gave us that gift, mm -hmm. a time of just being. <laughs> ah, yes. That's mm. cool. Wow. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe we can do this again tomorrow and the next day. <laughs> <laughs> 
would love. <laughs> oh, you're such a delight, Hara. <laughs> You are, you are, really, wow. Okay, so, um, you know, you, you gave over these beautiful three invisible connectors. connectors. Um, is there anything in terms of, you know, really vital information that you think couples have to know in order to have a good marriage? Yeah, it goes back to make sure that what you put in the space between you is loving. And if you put something that doesn't belong there, say, oh, I just put something in the space. It doesn't belong there. Oops, let me take it out. Mm -hmm. And that you remember there's a bridge and that your partner is that other world, very different from you. And that even if you're not crossing, remember they're over there with their own culture, rhythm, music, delightful being that they are. And you want to just rejoice in the fact that they are such an interesting world, different than you. And the third one is to know that there are these magical moments in which suddenly you're going to feel so deeply connected. You know, one day Yumi and I were in an Uber and we were in one of those magnificent zones of encounter. And the driver turns around, and he says, you guys aren't married, are you? He couldn't imagine that a couple <laughs> in the zone of the encounter would actually be married to each other. We said, well, we just got married 55 years ago. <laughs> so I it really think, was. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Remembering at all times that you are responsible for the quality of that space. That there is a bridge to cross and a person on the other side who's rich you know, their world is filled with very interesting neighborhoods for you to visit. <laughs> and that there is that encounter and it exists and you can make it occur. I think just the knowledge of that is really important. Mm. Yes, I think everyone's gonna take this in big time. So clear, so, so, so great. So, so before we say goodbye, is there anything else you want to leave with our couples to give them some hope, guidance, inspiration? Hmm. You know, the way I call my lectures is the miracle of connection. And I think what I want to leave with people is that each one of us is a miracle. Our relationships are a miracle. Our children are miracles and that we can start every day just saying thank you for the miracle. And that is a beautiful, miraculous note to end on and just wishing all of our listeners open miracles and just positive energy and that space being so connected. Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you, Haiti, for, for really being present with us in a way that is so, so remarkable and teaching us things that are from another world that are in, inside of us. Exactly. And um, just sharing your beautiful marriage, your beautiful wisdom, your beautiful life, um, your beautiful heart. And how can people find out more about you and so yeah, my well. website is really my name www.hadyschleifer.com and so there all the information there's a lovely TED talk that I did in Israel that people will enjoy seeing that talks about the three invisible connectors and uh, some YouTubes of the work I do I think people can step in there and learn a world okay and if anyone wants to work one-on-one -on -one with you they can find you there exactly. on your website. Okay. yes right exactly. okay okay yeah. well i have a feeling you're gonna get lots of international <laughs> calls after this so, thank you Chara. thank you big 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 hug big 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 <laughs> hug <laughs> bye, bye. Okay. <laughs>